The southeast U.S. is waking up to a messy morning with two separate low-pressure areas over the region. We can see one here over the Gulf visibly spinning just south of Louisiana with a rather impressive low pressure area. Another low pressure system is expected to become more defined right off the Florida Peninsula later today. In fact, this other low pressure area has been marked for potential tropical development, but thankfully the chances remain pretty low. Regardless of this system actually becoming a tropical storm, we expect it to move up the east coast and eventually move inland around Atlantic Canada. In this forecast, I also want to highlight a slow-moving rainmaker for California over the next couple of days, persisting into the weekend. And for the last portion of the video, we're going to be taking an early look at our next possible storm system, which could bring some strong to severe storms from Texas into Dixie Alley. With this in mind, let's begin today's forecast. So the first thing you're going to notice is this rainmaker for the southern U.S., more specifically around Florida. A lot of the heaviest rain will stay over the Gulf waters for the morning, but one thing you'll notice is the repetitive thunderstorms over south Florida, which will eventually become a problem as we go through the day. By the afternoon hours, we're going to be seeing intense thunderstorm activity bearing down across Miami and Fort Lauderdale, and this will just continue even after the sun goes down. These heavy storms will continue past midnight, which is unfortunately quite concerning. These are the rainfall totals according to the Weather Prediction Center, and you can see where much of that heavy rain will fall. For the most part, we'll see the heaviest rain stay over the Gulf waters, but with that second low pressure area hovering around South Florida, we may see widespread totals around 4, 5, 6, and even 7 inches across southeast Florida, and I certainly wouldn't be surprised if we saw some totals exceeding 10 inches. Because of this, we also have a moderate risk of excessive rainfall across this region, and this does include the entire Miami metropolitan area, extending to Fort Lauderdale and Coral Springs. That's not the end of this system, since we expect it to move up the east coast thereafter. You will see a very noticeable cold front advancing towards the northeast as the system rides up the coast, and the exact timing that these systems meet will determine how far east or west the coastal storm goes. We think the most likely scenario at this time is going to be a close call for the northeast before moving into Atlantic Canada, and then producing a major snowstorm for Quebec and Labrador, while Nova Scotia and Newfoundland get heavy rain and strong wind. These are the potential snowfall accumulations in Canada through November 20th. Those areas in pink could see 10 to 20 centimeters of snow, with 20 to 30 possible in the green, and then up to 40 or even 50 centimeters in the red shades. But we also have some other weather stories besides this system, such as the California rain. For today, the system is slowly approaching and we expect rainfall to move into Southern California initially, before spreading across Central California by later today. Showers continue for Thursday before a brief lull in the activity on Friday, before another round of heavier rain moves in for Saturday, and then eventually slowing down for Sunday. As you see here, the rainfall will come through pretty spaced out, so this will thankfully keep the flood threat pretty low. Over the course of the next five days, it looks like California will collect a decent amount of rain, especially across the central California coast and the Sierra Nevada mountains. And this leads us to the third portion of today's video, which I wanted to discuss our next potential storm. Some model guidance is suggesting that a new storm is heading towards the northwest, and it will morph with whatever's left with the system that crashed into California, which could produce a system over the southern plains between November 19th and the 20th. This could potentially be our next severe weather producer, but only time will tell. But one thing that we can look at is the potential upper air pattern. The California storm system lurking off the coast and it's becoming a cutoff low. A cutoff low pressure system is an area of low pressure that basically disconnects itself from the jet stream. This is why we expect the system to meander around off California's coast for so long, because it's not stuck to the jet stream and the jet stream is really what keeps things moving. As we push this forward, we see the cutoff low eventually catch onto the subtropical jet stream, and this will help move it along into the southern U.S. Then we see a new system come into the Pacific Northwest and then dive down over the Rockies. Shortly thereafter, we're going to see both systems connect, which you can see in the upper air pattern. What you're seeing here is the upper level winds on November 20th, and basically what's happening is a northern jet stream is going to be shoving into the subtropical jet stream, 
and this could help the system gain some strength from eastern Texas into Dixie Alley. This is a reason why some models are suggesting some severe weather development across this region, but it's way too early to know the exact severity of these storms. The GFS model does suggest some convective available potential energy across Texas and Oklahoma around this time, which could foster some severe weather development from the hill country into the DFW metroplex, but with eastward extent we may see a decrease in severity. But that's just the GFS. On the other hand, if we look at the Canadian model, we see that the most severe storms are showing up around Dixie Alley, so this proves that we just really don't know just yet. We will be closely monitoring the situation in the coming days, so if you do live within this red area I've shaded in, make sure you remember that severe weather is possible between November 20th and the 22nd, although timing and intensity is still uncertain. Make sure you do consider subscribing to this channel for timely weather forecasts and important information, not only for the US but also for Europe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.